What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah Ryan, Sarah Ryan Fit. Some people call me Sarah Fit. Any of them will do, but I'm so glad you are here. This channel has honestly been such a long time coming for me and I don't even know why. Like, I don't have a good reason. Um, for some reason, YouTube just intimidates me. I've been wanting to get on here and truly make meaningful content on this platform for a really long time. And I have just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because it honestly intimidates me. If I'm being honest, yeah. Um, which is crazy for me to say because here I am sitting on like socials and as my job in life is to motivate people around me and motivate people to do things that make them uncomfortable. So no more of that. We are diving right in. We're gonna have some fun here. I honestly am excited. As soon as I like just start doing it and get comfortable on here, I know I'm gonna love it. Um, I've been wanting to be able to show y'all like more of my personality. I feel like I'm not able to show nearly as much as um, I would like to. Like on Instagram and TikTok, I have a pretty big personality. Yeah, this way I get to, I get to show it a little bit more and I feel like I really can have a larger impact through this platform as well Instagram and TikTok can be such quick hits quick hits so I feel like here I'll really get into dive into a lot of topics and um, y'all can really get to know me in a different way and I can get to know y'all in a different way so I'm really excited so let's just get right into it I had put a question and answer Q&A poll on my Instagram story a while back because um, I wanted to be able to just use this first video to introduce myself, answer any questions that y'all who have been following me um, and support me, thank you, uh, wonder about me or wanna know because if you're just, just sitting here and introducing myself, I don't really fully know what to say, honestly. So I wanted y'all to kind of give me a little guidance on what you were wanting. So this is gonna be a pretty casual first video. I'm gonna just sit here and pull up the questions that y'all asked me. I have like a list of the ones that I wanna try to get to. And I'm just gonna chat and yeah. All right, let's get into it. First, I feel like I already introduced myself a little bit, but I'll kind of run it back. My name is Sarah Ryan. Um, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I went to the University of Oklahoma for four and a half years um, where I studied health and exercise science and got a minor in Spanish. Um, I was there for four and a half years because I took one semester to study abroad in Spain and it was the most amazing thing. School was really where I figured out my love for health and exercise science and fitness. When I first got to school, honestly, y'all, I had no idea what I wanted to do. No idea. You know, you're fresh 18 years old and you're like, okay, I feel like I have the world at my fingertips, but also I have no idea what the heck I want to do. Um, and that's pretty much how I felt. So not until my second year was when I had declared health and exercise science, but I didn't even know why. I just knew I kind of liked the human body. I liked fitness kind of, like I didn't really know still. Um, and then like my junior year, I declared pre-med, pre-med. Um, I was good at school, honestly. Like I could, I'm good at school, I can get good grades. I like to study, I'm kind of a nerd. So I was like, why don't I just go do pre-med? Like, and so yeah, I dove right in and I'm somebody who when I decide I'm gonna do something, I just go like all into it. So I was all into pre-med, I was there, you know, and then COVID hit. And honestly, that period in my life was a blessing in disguise because it forced my life to slow down for a second for me to figure out what I truly, truly wanted out of life. And when COVID hit, I was the peak of my pre-med studies. Like I was in biochem, I was in like multiple science classes. I was also taking MCAT prep. I was supposed to take my MCAT that semester. It was just a bunch of stuff going on. And then COVID hit and everything just like stopped. Like the whole world stopped. And I just sat there and I was like, this is, this will never happen again in life where I just get to almost press pause on the world. And life had been going so crazy at the time. And so the more and more I like reflected and I journaled on it and I really did a lot of introspective work at that time. And I figured out that I had so much holding me back about med school. The idea of getting into med school didn't even excite me. I was just doing it because I felt like I needed a path to be on. I needed a goal to work towards, I needed a path to be on, and I didn't really actually want to go to med school. And I even shadowed some doctors before that and I did not enjoy it. Um, and so I made the pretty bold, risky choice to tell my parents and my family um, that I wanted to drop out of pre-med. Um, I dropped my advisor, I, and everyone, they were very supportive, they always have been, always have been very supportive of just following my dreams. My dad has told me since I was little, follow your dreams and the money will come, you'll, you'll make the job work, just follow your passion. And so I sat them down and I was like, med school's not my passion, I don't want to do this, I want to pursue health and fitness. I had been into working out at that point for a couple years and I was learning more and more and I loved learning on my own, I loved studying it on my own. And then as my major was getting deeper and deeper into my studies, I was like, I love this. Like I, lo I was so good at anatomy, I loved it. I loved physiology, I loved um, 
like advanced sports nutrition, exercise physiology. Oh, I just ate it up. And I was like, this is what I need to do with my life. And so literally that semester, it was like 2020, right? End of 2020 is when I dropped pre-med, started my fitness page and it's been this ever since. Within two months of dropping pre-med, I started an online coaching business and started training finally in person. I had been like training myself for a couple years, which obviously is not the same as training other people. I started training my sister here and there and my siblings just to like get more comfortable training people. And then I dove in and got a job in Norman while I was still in school for my last semester at the local gym there so I could get some experience training people and then started taking online clients, writing programming and stuff. And it's just been a whirlwind ever since. And I feel like I just got so deep into a random rant there. <laughs> the question was just introduce yourself and I just gave my whole backstory, but okay, this is how this is gonna go. How old are you? When did you start your fitness journey? Um, I am about to turn 25. I'll turn 25 in two months. I started my fitness journey right around age 19, 20. Um, I have always been into being active and like into fitness in some way. I grew up playing sports. I come from a family that is a very active family. We're always playing some sort of sport, some sort of game, very, very competitive. I grew up cheering, playing basketball. Um, those were my two main things as I got older. I was uh, on my varsity basketball team in high school and cheered for the first two years and then just played basketball after that. Um, so I've always been active, but not until when I got to college, I missed that active aspect of my life, that component. And so I was really feeling lost for a little bit, trying to figure out like how to get into being active. I also have really, really low body image at the time. I kind of grew up having bad body image, not kind of, I did. I grew up having bad body image. I grew up having really low self-confidence, really, really low. I always viewed myself so much more negative than I think other people around me viewed me. Um, and I definitely had body dysmorphia. So growing up, I believed I was so overweight. I believed I was just so unhealthy. When I look back at pictures, I'm like, that's what I looked like. Like, it's crazy. Body dysmorphia really messes with your head. So if you struggle with that, I promise you I relate. I still have my days nowadays too. Um, but what was I saying? I just lost my train of thought. Oh, right, yes. I wanted to get into being active. And so my, I kind of started going to the gym freshman year. I was trying to figure out, like I've also, I had obviously worked out from being on sports and stuff, but didn't really know what I was doing. So I'd find different programs online. I remember finding Kayla It Seems, is that how you say her name? I remember, I remember finding her workouts and doing those freshman year. Um, and I still didn't really know what I was doing. It wasn't until the end of my sophomore year when I really dove hard into it. I had just gone through a breakup and I really just wanted to pour into myself for the first time. And I went into a local gym when I got home that summer. It's called Elite. Um, it's just like a, a garage training type gym. It was a great atmosphere. I learned so much that summer. I literally fell in love with it that summer, y'all. Like, I worked out two days every day and loved it. I lived for it. I remember, like, looking back, I was probably, no, I was. I was being extreme for sure. But in the moment, I really, really loved it and enjoyed it. I didn't have a lot others else going on that summer. And I just poured into myself all summer long, I learned so much. And so after that summer, it really just took off from there for me wanting to learn more, wanting to figure out how to work myself out, want to understand weightlifting better, wanting to understand how to eat better, really wanted to understand my body, how to take control of my health. Um, I would say that was really a catalyst for me. Um, so that was, yeah, right around when I was 20 years old. My why? I honestly love this question. I um, I feel like I have a couple different answers to this question. So, and I've touched on it a little bit, but we'll do a, like a short and brief version. So. My why is a couple of things. My why started off just wanting to feel more comfortable and confident in my own skin. I grew up having low body image. I grew up having low just confidence overall. Um, I grew up having body dysmorphia for sure. And so I just wanted to feel confident and comfortable in my own skin. And so getting into fitness, learning weightlifting, learning how to better fuel my body, help me take control of my health and my confidence in a way that I had never understood before and never gotten to. Um, so that's how I started. My why now is to take that and try to impact other people. Empower, inspire, impact, and educate. Anytime I make content, anytime I am talking to a client or my members in Team Iconic, whatever it is, I always keep those four pillars in mind now. But my why started as a means of taking my power back and empowering myself through my health. And obviously that's still a why for me, absolutely, that's a lifelong journey, but now my why is more taking what I learned from that journey and applying it, helping to impact as many people as I can. Some of these I'm gonna like do separate videos for or include elsewhere, like what's in your gym bag. I'll definitely do a video for that. Um, let's see, what else? 
Advice for a younger teenager starting at the gym. Ooh, I love this one. So when I first started training my sister, she was, I wanna say 15 or 16 years old. And this is when I first like was getting pretty comfortable teaching other people, taking other people to the gym. And so I tried to make her, and my little brother too, but for sure my little sister, um, tried to make them come with me as much as I could get them to because I knew the power of educating them I knew the power of aiding them with the tools to learn how to work out. That was going to be something that they could then use for their lifetime. So I really wanted to implement those habits for them and teach them how to do, how to work out before they went off to college, you know? And now both of my siblings, my, well, my youngest brother, oh, I have three siblings. So let me just start there. Three siblings. My two youngest are twins and that's what I'm talking about. Jake, who is only 18 months younger than me, we definitely would work out together sometimes, but he was close enough in age to me that like, I didn't really need to teach him things. He grew up playing sports. He was on basketball, baseball, like he didn't really need to come with me to learn. My two younger siblings, they're five years younger than me, so they're a bit younger, and I wanted to really be able to impact them and teach them there. And so anyway, my little brother now plays, youngest brother now plays soccer in college. My little sister, um, she is a rock star in the gym. Literally, she works out now at the gym that I worked at, worked out at, and trained at, like trained clients at in college. And my boss there like notices that she knows what she's doing, or my old boss, I should say like saw her, realized she was my sister, we look alike. Like the genes run strong in my family. You can tell we're all related. Um, could tell was my little sister and was like, does she wanna be a trainer here? I can tell she knows what she's doing. And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm glad you say that because I definitely made it important to me to teach them. So this is all a long way of saying my advice to somebody who is a teenager starting the gym is just take these this time and these years to really learn and build a really good foundation because this is a habit you want to have and maintain for the rest of your life this is not just a short quick journey to try to get some certain body type right this is a habit you want to really build and get to build on for the rest of your life this really is a lifestyle and a lifelong journey so allow yourself to be a beginner allow yourself to focus on form and really dive into learning what's going on um, you can do that by hiring a trainer right you can do that by by researching on YouTube, researching in journals, like whatever it is, but really invest in yourself in some way to learn and educate yourself so that you can aid yourself with those tools, especially if you're going off to college. That is a hard time to learn those habits then. I really wanted my little sister to learn those habits before she got to college because I knew, especially as a girl, the impact that it would have if she wasn't able to fall back on a habit she had already built, right? So she could stay healthier in college. And she definitely has been doing that, which is exciting. Okay, a couple shorter questions. Do I live alone? I do. I love it. I love it. Um, I This is my first year living alone. I moved into this apartment in April, so it's been almost a year. Before I moved into this apartment, I was in a really, really tough place mentally, honestly. And that well, it didn't have to do with my roommate. Um, but I just, I was, I felt very stagnant. I felt very stuck. I needed, I needed something to push me to grow and push me to better learn and understand myself. I was definitely seeking all sorts of distractions. Um, in my living place before this because I was constantly used to being around people. I went from living with my siblings and my family. I have three siblings, so it was a constantly, something was happening in that household growing up. Um, it was always fun, always someone to hang out with, right? Went off to college, lived with roommates the whole time. My last year of college, I lived with five of my best friends. Like, it was always something going on. You know, and then I moved out from college, moved to Dallas, I had a roommate then, and we were always hanging out. So I never just spent time alone in the way that I needed to. Um, and so I definitely hit a point where I was like, I don't know myself at all. And it was really, it was definitely a tough time. And I knew in order to really start to better understand myself and to learn myself and to grow within myself and within my goals, I needed to live alone. And honestly, it's been the best thing I could have done. It was hard and scary at first. Um, but then you get used to it and you just love it. Like, I love my solitude now. I love my alone time. Um, I could go a whole weekend with just myself. Um, not that I always do. Like, I have my family super close. My mom and dad are like 30 minutes away from here. And I have friends here that I hang out with. But if I, sometimes I could go a whole weekend just getting things done, just hanging out with myself, going to the gym, making content. And I don't feel lonely. Like, it's the, be the best lesson from living alone is learning that solitude is different than loneliness. Loneliness is empty, solitude is full. And I feel so full in my solitude, but it's definitely a lesson that has come from living alone. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever live with somebody again before I like get married and have a long-term like partner, you know? So, but yeah, I live alone and I like it. It was probably a lot more information than just that do you live alone, but that's okay. How to start sprinting. This is one of my most commonly asked questions on my pages, just start. I know that's not the answer you're looking for. I know it's not. There is not some like secret sauce. There's not. 
just start running as fast as you can for 10 to 15 seconds, break, and then do it again. You could go outside, you could go to a track, you could go to a park, you could go to a trail, you could go to a parking lot, you could go anywhere or you go to a gym. But a lot of people tell me on my pages and my comments that they're too scared to go to a gym and use one of those like manual treadmills that I run on or even to use a normal one because on like a regular treadmill, you're not going to actually be creating, um, you're not gonna have max effort because you're not creating the force there. You're keeping up with the pace set on the treadmill, right? So a lot of people always tell me they're scared to, then get outside. Go find a track, go find a park, go find somewhere that's empty and literally just go run as fast as you can for 10 to 15 seconds break and start again. Obviously there are a lot of things that you can do to really improve your sprint mechanics, improve your, sp your speed and your strength. But if you're just wanting to know how to start, just start. I'm telling you, just get out there. And I'm, once you start, you're gonna love it. Everybody in my Team Iconic on ladder, shout out Team Iconic, everybody in my team sprints and loves it. Literally, I'm telling you, everybody gets so addicted to it, it's intoxicating. It's the most empowering feeling, so just start. Everybody can run, everybody is an athlete. Well, I shouldn't say that. Obviously not everybody in the world. But if you are wanting to get started, just go start. There's no secret thing you have to do, okay? Took a snack break because my camera said that um, it was internally heating. I don't still know how to even work this, honestly. I'm figuring this out, y'all. I'm pushing you on. These are so good. Like, I could sit here and really eat the whole bag. So I guess they're kind of dangerous, but... I'm not gonna eat the whole bag. I'm gonna a couple more. A couple more. Okay, let's get back to our questions. How tall are you? Man, people actually ask that a lot. Y'all, I'm short. I think people think I'm taller than I am. I actually had a friend one time tell me that I come off taller than I am, and I was like, that doesn't even make sense. And he was like, watch. We're sitting with a group of our friends from like high school, literally, we've known these people for forever. And we're all sitting down, and he's like, hey, ask my guy friend who's known me a long time, how tall do you think Sarah is? And he goes, I don't know, 5'9. I looked at him, I was like, are you for real? People really think I'm tall? I am 5'4". Five, 5'4 four. Five, four and a half on a good day. I think it's because I have a big personality and I carry myself confidently, so people just assume I'm taller. I've told, been told this like a lot recently, honestly. <laughs> so anyway, I'm 5'4". Um, but y'all were saying that you're asking to, to know if you should invest in Gymshark, like it's because you're really tall. I have a lot of tall friends who wear Gymshark. I know a lot of girls on social media who are tall and rock Gymshark, so don't feel like you can't just because I'm a shorty over here. <laughs> I'm pretty short. Um, do you have a man? I do not. I am very single. I'm in my single girl era and I am loving it, honestly. I'm loving my single girl era. Um, I know the era will come to an end at some point. I'm not against it coming to an end, but right now I'm really soaking up every lesson and blessing that I am figuring out in this time of my life. I'm just really pouring into myself, figuring myself out, enjoying my solitude. There was a, a long time in my life where I did not like my solitude and I was a much more anxious person and being alone made me feel anxious. And so finally, as of recently, probably over the past like six months, learning to really appreciate, enjoy, and love my solitude has been the biggest blessing of this Super Bowl era so far. And I am, I'm not in a rush to get out of it. If something walks into my life organically, I'm not opposed to it, but I really do love the focus I've had, the growth I've had. And so I'm just, I'm chilling. I'm vibing out in this Super Bowl era right now. I'm vibing out. Um, let's see. I also, let me touch on that. I also, the more you learn to love yourself, okay? The more you love yourself, the higher, the more you value yourself, the more you validate yourself on your own, the higher your standards go. And the, the, um, the less likely you are to allow energy in your life that doesn't need to be there, right? So truly, when you learn to validate yourself, love yourself, value yourself, and you don't need it from external sources, no one can just walk in your life because they feel like it. Right? Your standards are much higher. What you're going to accept in your life is much higher. Like I'm good on my own. I'm good over here. I'm happy. I'm loving life. Like I like what I do. I love what I do. I love my life. You know. Um, and if anyone's gonna come along, along and be a part of my life, they're going to add value to it. Right? They are not going to add a distraction to my life. They're not gonna take away from my life. I don't need. I don't need it at all. Right? So when you truly start cultivating that mindset, the energy that you then allow into your life definitely changes um, and your standards are much higher. And so, you know, if someone came along who was going to add value to my life and was a good addition into my life organically and they liked the same things in me, we aligned well and like our journeys in life made sense together, awesome, cool, I'm, I'm up for it. But other than that, I'm not out here looking, I'm not out here settling, so yeah. Why do you often wear sweaters when you train? I think you mean sweatshirts. 
it's the same thing. Honestly, I love working out in layers um, because for one, I sweat more. <laughs> for two, it locks me in differently, especially when I'm recording all my movements in the gym, if I'm recording workouts for y'all. I mentally do not lock in as hard because I get a lot more wrapped up in well, what does that angle look like? What do I look like doing this? Like you can't help but become wrapped up in that. If I just have a sweatshirt on, my hood on, I'm locked in and I'm really working and then I'm recording what I'm doing, it's different than doing something to be recorded. Did y'all get that? Did that just, okay. Recording what you're doing because you're doing it versus doing something to be recorded. And that's something I've learned with feeling myself in the gym. Don't get me wrong, I still sometimes will go train in top crop tops. I love a cute crop, like, right? But more often than not, I love training in a couple layers and throwing a hoodie on because I sweat more, but also it just locks me in differently. I'm mentally locked in. I'm not worried about like what I'm looking like. I'm not worried about the angles I'm getting. Um, I'm really just going hard, getting my work in, and yeah, so that's why. Um, also, it's cute, what? A little hoodie on, but they have, that's cute. Me. Okay, next question. One thing that keeps me motivated even on days I am drained. My why. Your why will always ground you. Your why will always keep you going even on days you don't want to. But your why has to be bigger than yourself. And I think people miss that sometimes. Your why has to be bigger than you. Your why can't just be, well, I just want to see my waist get smaller. I mean, that can be a goal of yours, right? But that's not your why. Your why has to be so much bigger than you. My why is I want to impact as many people as I can um, in the most positive way I can. I want to empower them, inspire them, impact them, and educate them, right? I want my impact to really feel felt in a very positive way. And in order for that to happen, I have to keep showing up every day. If, if I don't show up, how can I encourage and motivate everybody around me to show up, right? So my why, your why has to be bigger than you. So on days I don't want to keep going, then I just tell myself to keep going for somebody else. Maybe your why is your spouse, your kid, your best friend. I, I, your why could be anything. It just needs to be bigger than you, right? Um, and then from that, aside from your why, when you build strong habits, your, your habits also keep you grounded on days you don't wanna show up, right? Your habits allow you to muster up the discipline to keep going when your motivation is lacking. Um, and a mindset that you have to constantly choose to have is that discipline is the highest form of self-love. So if you truly, truly want to learn really good self-love, then you need to learn discipline. When you get into the habit of showing up on days you don't want to, that's also a habit you build too. That's a muscle you literally need to train and to build. It's not easy to show up on days you don't want to. I promise you, people you look up to in this world, it could be fitspos, it could be, it doesn't have to be fitness, it could be anybody. They also have days they are not motivated. They also have days they don't wanna show up, but it's not just something that happens to you, right? There's nothing wrong with you. It happens to everybody, we're all human, right? It's just, it's what you choose to do on the days that you aren't motivated. That's actually the biggest difference between people who are super successful and people who are struggling to be successful successful is their ability to show up on days that they are not motivated right now and the question it says on days I am drained if you're drained because you're like running on empty you it's a crazy week and you know it's been a super long day and you just like the gym is just not happening that day that's fine I'm talking about in the grand scheme of things I'm talking about big picture I'm not you know I have days where I'm like you know what that was a long freaking day and I just got me to the gym today that that happens it's life it's inevitable right but I'm talking about big picture here more often than not being able to choose discipline when your motivation is lacking that is a habit that you train okay I like this question a lot this question is actionable steps to become more confident first and foremost I think People need to understand it's going to be very hard for you to be confident if you're not living as your true authentic self. So first, do some soul searching and really dive into who you are and start your journey of understanding you and learning you because the more you learn about you and the more you understand you, the easier it is for you to confidently show up as yourself. Because how are you gonna be confident if you don't know who you are, right? So I think really, um, prioritizing learning about yourself will help with that confidence overall. So aside from just showing up as your true self also building self-efficacy self-efficacy is basically self-confidence um and it's the confidence that you're going to show up for yourself and that you're going to be able to do something right so the more and more that the more proof you give yourself that you're going to show up for yourself the more confident you become learning to be impeccable with your word to yourself is a big one so if you've never read the book the four agreements please go get it and read it it's a really quick read and it's so good and these four agreements really apply to everything in your life. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. 
don't make assumptions and always do your best and those sound really broad obviously um but the author really dives in really well um in the book so i highly recommend reading it but i want to hone in on that be impeccable with your word um not only being impeccable with your word to other people that's obviously important but being impeccable with your word to yourself so like if you tell yourself okay tomorrow i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna get these three things done i'm gonna get this task done and i'm gonna go to, go to the gym whatever it is whatever it is you tell yourself if you wake up and then don't do those things you're not very impeccable with your word to yourself but you don't have confidence in yourself because you don't even respect what you tell yourself right you're not even impeccable with your word to yourself so committing to being better with being more impeccable with your word to yourself i think makes a really big difference too so two steps so far have been to learn yourself better and really show up as your authentic self as best as you can and number two be impeccable with your word to yourself from there the more you do things that really take your power back over your health and your life um like going to the gym, taking care of your physical health, setting boundaries in your life so that you really are respecting yourself and your boundaries. All of those things come together to create a more confident version of you. So in your pursuit to your highest self in life, you're going to, over time, become more confident on that path because on your journey to becoming your highest self, you're going to be living your most authentic self, your most true self. You're going to be impeccable with your word. You're going to do all the things you need to do to be taking care of yourself and putting yourself first, saying no when you need to. All of those things come together to make a confident you. So I hope that made sense. I think I was kind of all over the place, but hopefully that was helpful in some way. I feel like that's probably it for this video now. This has been so much longer than I expected. I don't even know if I did a good job introducing myself here. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> Like, I'm happy to do this again if this wasn't that good. If y'all have a lot more questions still that weren't hit, I like I don't know what people, I, you forget what people know and don't know about you, right? So um, I think that's a wrap for now. Maybe we'll run it back again. I don't know, but thanks for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Um, and however you support me, I appreciate you so, so much. Love and appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being patient with me on this YouTube journey. I'm figuring it out, guys. I'm figuring it out. We're gonna start pumping more content out for y'all. So definitely in the comments, let me know what you thought or um, let me know what video you'd like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next video.